Hey there, hey, it's Michelle with Brilliant Quest. And today I wanna talk to you about why your attention span is so short and why you need to work on that so that you can focus. So first and foremost, as I'm leading in, I wanna just get right to it and give you some points and then we'll talk about them. So the first thing is, is one of the biggest impacts to your ability to focus is your attention. Yes, your attention. And just this week alone, <laughs> Google Trends has shown that most people, um, the biggest impact besides you know your normal entertainment and you know what's going on with the celeb of the day is people are out here searching for how to focus, how to expand their attention. And I wanna just say this, number one, your attention span is up for grabs. It is being hijacked because willingly or unwilling, willingly, knowingly or unknowingly, you are allowing unfettered access to your attention. Now, not you, not, not you that's, that's watching this right now because this is gonna help you. But <laughs> we have been set up for our attention spans to be hijacked. Number two, <laughs> your attention span is just like your feelings. They re it requires a boundary and it's only gonna be you that can, can establish and build up that boundary, okay? And then number three, here are some ways that you're going to have to take back the power of your attention span, okay? So the first one is it's, it's being hijacked, it's being usurped from you. You know, with the second one is it's up to you to build it and then, you know, being able to establish the boundaries and then understanding that how you build your attention. Number three, how you build your attention span is going to directly impact how you're able to focus. All right, let's get on to it. All right, number one, they are stealing out here, people. Yes, it's they're not even trying to hide it now. You can just watch uh, a commercial and see how it has changed. Um, now, I don't want to blame anybody um, for this, but you know, evolution is evolutioning. Uh, in other videos, I talk about understanding the uh, the flow of something. You know, and when you understand the flow of something, what you're doing is is you're understanding it's uh its origin story its initial point and understanding how it progresses so you're understanding the progression of something and so this is a, a I, I hate to simplify this but you know we, this is not a deep dive this is just me giving you some quick points to help you you know so consider this the, the the setup the background so the evolution of something is something is extreme then it moves into the norm and then it moves into the required and then it moves into the grotesque all right so let's deal with attention you had where you had extreme stuff. Think about the car dealership ads that used to come on late at night on, on TV. And if you're too young for that, just just Google it. Uh, they, they would come in and they knew that you were sleepy. You were watching TV because you you know didn't have anything else to do because there really wasn't anything on besides infomercials and car dealership ads. And the car dealership ad would do this. Hey, it's so and so one. Come on down. Oh, what that was it, was, it was called or is still called a pattern interrupt. Okay, hold that pattern interrupt. So they would break the monotony of the, the talking heads, the droning on of something in the background to wake you up, you know, so that you could, you know, see what was going on. And y'all, my, I, I'm, do, I'm using natural light and the sun and the clouds are doing what they do. So I apologize for that. But as long as you can see me, <laughs> we're going to keep going. All right. And the dog, I just said the dog was quiet. And here he goes barking. But anyway, focus, Michelle, you focus. Okay. So anyway, um, you had pattern interrupt. Then right after pattern interrupt, they would quickly quickly, quickly break the pattern, make a bold promise, deliver on the promise, and then you guess it again. Break that pattern and, and do the cycle over and over again. And so when you had this, hey, this is so-and-so, so-and-so, make a promise. And I'm gonna show you how you can get your hands on this, and then they would show a car. And then they would tell you, come on down, you don't need you know good finance, I mean, good credit or any of that kind of stuff. You can walk away today with this lovely. Then they would normally have, and I'm still talking about the car, uh, commercials of old, if you haven't been tracking, then they would throw it to someone else. And so Shirley is going to show you uh, another one we have. And in that little 15 second commercial, they would have taken you through three dopamine hitting loops where they grab your attention, show you something with a promise, give you the reward, put it off to someone else who slows it down. If you notice, Shirley is gonna move slower than the initial guy and she's going to do things and show you and rub on and pat the car and all of that because they're setting you up for the final one where 
he comes back. So come on down to do, 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 you know, whatever. And then he would show all of these cars because he's already set up an expectation of a reward that you're going to get a great deal. You're going to get a nice car and surely it's going to be waiting for you. All right. That was circa 20, 30 years ago. Today, people like Mr. Beast, if you've not heard of Mr. Beast, he's a very popular YouTuber and he became known for this type of editing style with the outlandish so that he grabs that attention. But in today's world, because we are able to do so much more and there is more competition because more people have access to the media, we now have this race to capture attention. And they've even said it. You can watch Gary V and others who are out here as the leaders and the, the, uh, the main thinkers of observing uh, how we uh, get in front of people to interact with them. And what's the one thing they've said? They moved from content being king, then they moved to creator, and now it's all about attention. And the people are unaware that unknowingly they are having their attention hijacked because the 15 second car ad from the past has now become the five second or even six second uh, video TikTok short or whatever that you can't get enough of. And so you keep watching them and watching them and watching them. And the result has been your attention span has become shorter and shorter and shorter because you are caught in a hormonal, mental, hormonal link where the dopamine gives you the drive. And so the next short, hey, you know, pattern interrupt or let me ask you a question or why is it, you know, and, and it's just constant, and constant. Then you get this, uh, the, the payoff quickly. So you get that serotonin. But guess what happens? Once you've gotten that hit, it becomes, you, you need, you require more and more and more to get that same dopamine hit. And so it becomes where you consume more and more short content, short stimuli, short things that give, get you to the payoff as fast as possible. And then when you have to go to work or you have to do things that require you to pay attention because they are not set up to give you dopamine hits, they're set up to give you actual real rewards for lifestyle and living. You're like, I don't have time for this. You know, you know, it's bad when you have people in the comments of a recipe for something great that they didn't even have to pay for yelling. Just get to the point. You know, it's bad when you have people that will come to a video that is giving them, putting them on free game, real thought out uh, processes of how to do something, and they're time stamping them. You know, they're they're putting in. Well, y'all, it don't really, they don't really get a good point into here. And that's subjective. You might have thought that that was the point where people need to get to where they start talking, but somebody else might have needed that build up so that they can understand the context and uh, and really get the value of watching the video. And here you are with your attention less than a goldfish self time stamping certain videos. If it is not where you are just helping the creator, you know, like putting the time for each little thing, if it's not already in there, don't come doing that to somebody else's thing. First of all, it's rude. And then second of all, it shows the world that you don't have self-control of your mind. And I really am wanting to say that you're being hijacked because nefarious people are doing this as well. Folks don't, oh my gosh, folks don't realize that when you reveal to people how short your attention span is, you might as well open up the world uh open up your your windows to the world naked and say come get it because you are vulnerable you are letting factions know to target you to say oh well we can slip anything in because another thing too with attention attention span should be able to be varied you should be able to appreciate something that gives you a quick dopamine hit like a pop song or you know a popular song you should be able to appreciate something that gives you a delayed payoff you know to where you get the promise, like watching a good documentary or a slow burn uh, romance novel, if you're into that stuff. <laughs> but you should be able to have a menu of varied abilities with your attention. Yeah, you should be flexible. You should not only be where, get to the point. You should not, that should not be your one hit of how you go about your life because you can't focus. And because of that, this is the point that I, I really kind of want you to get in your attention span. The dangers of letting someone hijack it is that they can get you addicted to repetition. You're like, repetition, but didn't you tell us about dopamine? Yes. In your hunt for dopamine, you start to desire and crave more. And in your consuming more of shorter and shorter hits of dopamine, you end up spending more time and therefore you expose yourself, sometimes aware, but most of the time unaware of repetition. And in the repetition, is programming. 
You might be like, hold on, Michelle, this is sounding a little conspiracy theory. This is not conspiracy theory, you guys. This is real. Um, I don't know if uh, this, well, okay, I'll just say it. I studied, because uh, that's how my curiosity quotient, you know, my high curiosity works. I studied what makes songwriting so powerful. And I studied how there is a certain formula of repetition that you use to put uh, the potential of going viral very, very high. And just bear with me a moment, and I promise I'm gonna get to the, the second and the third, you know, the second being how you need to start guarding yourself in the third, some practicals. Okay, but listen, listen, Linda. <laughs> okay, Beyonce. Mm -hmm. She and her writing team, because, you know, she has a lot of writers, she has almost kind of like re established how to make a viral hit because of how they position the the wording the the repetition of the music the repetition of the words the repetition of the beat and it makes it go viral now i don't want to date this but if you're watching this in the future thank you and just you know for for, for purposes of you know illustration don't be like hey, it's old this is evergreen this is always going to work but at this particular time she has moved into uh, the country genre and she has two songs at this particular time uh that she has come out with and if you understand attention span, if you understand repetition, if you understand programming, if you understand popularity, you will see these two songs in a whole different light. And you know what? Y'all let me know if you want me to deep dive into attention span with these particular songs, you know, uh, for Beyonce. Okay. But anyway, just quickly, the two songs right now, she has an upbeat one and then she has a slow beat one. And most people are rightfully so saying, I really like that upbeat one. And it's called Texas Hold'em. And her classic uh, repetition formula is in there. And so what she does is, now, I'm not saying you have to go listen to it, but if you go and listen to Texas Hold'em, I want you to be, pay attention to these things. I want you to pay attention to the beats. In this particular song, they're claps and a word called woo. And she uses them to do the same thing that the car dealership was doing. Pattern interrupt, come back. you know. And so she'll say her little verse, then she'll have the claps in there, a whistle, and then a woo. And that is programming you to want it again. And she does that four different major times in the song. And usually in about three minutes of a song, that's why usually they like to get songs that are about three minutes because it can give you a little bit of a story to capture your attention. It can put you through this process of pattern interrupt, dopamine um, driven to the payoff. And the payoff is the next section and it takes about three minutes now i'm not going to talk about why songs are getting shorter and all of that kind of stuff right now because that's not germane to helping you understand attention and how it's being programmed for you to crave it so okay this song texas hold'em is specifically made now irregardless of genre it is written just like a pop song with a country feel to it because it is purposefully constructed to become an earworm you listen to this thing. I don't know how many times you'll have to listen to it, but you listen to it and then it will get in your ear and you'll find yourself, Texas Hold'em, you know, that, that, whatever. Because of the proven process of hijacking your attention. Now, I appreciate Beyonce. I think it's great. I am not saying anything bad about it. I am saying that her team and her have infiltrated the world because they have understood how to capture and keep attention through their little process. The second song, 16 Carriages. The second song is a song to appease the niche of country music. And so it is a storytelling song. But even in the storytelling song, the, reputi the repetition, and the, this time it's the, the uh, sound, not necessarily the words, but the sound. And you guys, one of these days, I am going to put up the power of numbers so that you can understand. Because even if you look at 16, which is a seven, and carriages, it's subliminally doing some things too. And no, this is not conspiracy. This is real, you know, because numbers have energy. The, the, any mathematician worth his, worth his or her salt will say the same. Uh, it is set up the same way. But it is not diametrically opposed, but it is the opposite complement of the fast song. So she gives you the fast and then she pattern interrupts with this one to give you short story 
that gives you payoff about, I think three times if I, if memory serves me correctly with looking at this song. And so this is just an example. And like I said, thank you for allowing me to talk a little bit about these different little things and, um, uh, catch some of my lives, check out the community tab. I'll be posting when I'm going live. I'm, I'm actually going live uh, very soon. <laughs> uh, so make sure you check out the community tab and just a pause. Don't forget. I, somebody told me, Michelle, you ain't asking these people to do nothing. Y'all, if you like the comment, if you like the content, like, subscribe, comment, share, it really helps uh, me help you to know what, what you want and like, because I'm here to be uh, of a big sister with advice and service to you. Okay. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, even if you just put a heart, even if you just say, Hey, or whatever. Okay. So back to the programming. All right. So with the attention that's being hijacked, it is now become where if you are not aware, you will fall into the trap because they have gotten only better at understanding how the brain seeks um, to enjoy itself. Um, there's this book called Hooked, and I'll put it up here, uh, called Hooked, that kind of like teaches you <laughs> while teaching um, uh, businesses how to get you hooked on something, uh, to, to ingest it, to interact with it. And so if you, if you don't like to read, listen to it on audible, you know, or audio. Uh, but it's, it's really important that you start taking back the power of your attention because that's why your focus is shot. And speaking of, that's the second one, how and why you need to protect yourself. So I want to uh, highlight this. Oh my gosh. I want to highlight this uh, wonderful young man's channel. His name is Sirkin Bilgen. I'll put his uh, name and everything up and you can check his link in the description. And uh, Sirkin Bilgen is a, a wilderness enthusiast in Turkey. Now I'm just going to say it. I have a guilty pleasure. I love watching stuff that I know I'll never do. Um, when I was growing up, and my mom had six kids and we, we, I remember one time we were like, uh, uh going to, I was a, a, a Girl Scout brownie and we were going to go in the woods, you know, overnight. And my mom was like, that's fine. And I, I did it and I enjoyed it. And I came back and said, mom, why don't we ever camp? And she just looked at me and said, look, baby, if we're camping, it's because we got evicted. <laughs> and I left it alone at that. Um, but I tend to love watching people go out in the wilderness and just build something. And of course, because of me becoming and willing myself to become more aware of watching myself think, of watching how I think about things, I have started to learn things that have emerged for me. And one of the draws is not necessarily just them building and chopping wood and, and everything. I am liking the fact that a lot of these channels, there's no talking. Um, I mean, there can be, but there is no talking. You're just getting into the hum of the work, the hum of the naturalness of nature and those types of things. And it is part of our base being that we are to commune with our environment. And with attention spans, attention spans will come and only make you focus on one relationship. And we have at least four, at least four. Let me count them off for you real quick. So in this life, we have relationships with people. We have relationships with our environment, you know, our climate, wilderness, nature, whatever, mother nature. We have relationships with the animals and the fowl. And then we have relationships with the zeitgeist, meaning the, the spirit of the times, uh, what generations we're, we're, we're living through. And I mean, you can even tell how important this is, is because if you've ever had any kind of biology classes in high school or whatever, and they talk about mineral, uh, they talk about flora and fauna, those are insights to let you know that these are relationships that must be respected. Now there is a when I say zeitgeist of the times, I'm also talking about if, if you are religious or spiritual of understanding the bigness of it all. So I want to make sure that I don't slight the zeitgeist one. That's just a German word for spirit. OK, um, but those are relationships that we must have. And in today's world, attention is even trying to encroach on those so that we only focus on the interpersonal. We only focus on, hey, there, hey, get that money. Let's interact. Let's transact, you know, and you can see what's happening to our climate, to um, our, our animal family, you know, to, to the world in general. And so it is up to us to understand and become more self-aware with that. And the reason why I'm highlighting this young man's channel is because his channel moved from just showing you how he was building his little homestead. Uh, and he started off with, I didn't notice any power tools. <laughs> he was out there sawing and hammering and uh, he built his, um, his, his home. And he started with one little room and he added a room and all of those kinds of things. And that was fun because he didn't talk. He didn't have all his music playing in the background. And he just really allowed you to interact with him, interacting with that part of his world, showing you nature. And part of it, he had his dog and um, his dog, Durka. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not going to cry. But his dog, 
recently went missing and he has had this dog for 15 years that was his best friend that's his family and so his his videos moved from just enjoying the interaction with nature and it's in a purer form where he's not trying to be interpersonal with you you know he he went from not looking at you in the eye and pointing just allowing you to watch what he's doing to him being on a journey to find his dog and even in that he's still not doing a lot of talking and everything but you know what he is doing he is putting in more shots of him drinking his tea and looking out the window looking and hoping for his dog to come back and it's in those moments where it becomes poignant where you find well i have found myself i'm like wait a minute this video 40 minutes and i just been staring at this man staring out the window thinking about his dog so do not tell me that attention cannot <laughs> be extended and i looked at that because he will read a book he will film himself reading a book in the cabin he doesn't have a tv and you know you can tell and of course you know we got hair all over the place i apologize you guys i might take this part out with this hair oh my god i told you to behave okay so he has um made it where he'll read a book in the beginning when his dog was with him and he was in the one room he would make his little food and he would he always feeds fed the dog first so that showed his love for his dog so he would feed the dog first and then he would settle down you know with the little lighting after he had eaten and he'd pull out a book and when i tell you i was like oh i love this because he's you he's not trying to hit your dopamine to make you want you know to keep watching he's letting it breathe and that's one of, not one, that is the point I want to make right now because I don't want to give you a whole bunch of stuff. I want you to get to the point like I am focusing too, to when you're protecting your uh, attention, let it breathe. If you are engaging something in something that does not allow you to catch your breath or, or catch yourself or slow down, step away. Give yourself time to breathe. Because if you are caught up into something where you're not able to keep up or stay in control, you're being programmed. There are times now that as I have come back to my mind, I have been able to say, uh-uh, this is too much. You're getting overloaded. It's like the little kid who is sleepy, but they keep spinning and they talking and they run in and to the point where they just, and they fall. It's because you're getting too many inputs. And watching stuff like this, and by the way, these kinds of wilderness videos have millions, millions of views, and it doesn't take long. So you tell me, why are so many people willing to watch a video where nobody's talking they're not even looking at you it's like you're just peeping into their life and you're willing to watch for hours because a lot of these videos are hours long it might be because they are not requiring so many inputs to where they're trying to hijack your attention and so you would do well to incorporate some of the, the things that are more calming and that and i'm, I'm going to say this and then i'm going to get to the last part thank you so much for staying with me um that brings me to meditation and don't don't you turn this off i'm not gonna say what you think i'm saying okay all right so with meditation meditation is uh hard for a lot of people because it makes an assumption that you are in control of your ability to pay attention and a lot of people today have been on a constant diet of being told what to pay attention to and for how long that meditation is torture and if that be you it's okay. Like I said, it's not your fault. You don't have to tell nobody but me. Okay. You can just, you can just pause this right now and say, Michelle, Gail, that's me. All right, boo-boo. I got you. So what you're going to do, all right, what you're going to do is first and foremost, you're going to become aware that meditation might not be for me right now because I need to work on taking back the authority over my attention. I need to be more proactive in how I am going to use my attention. You might start by saying, okay, I'm going to watch shorts, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause after two shorts and I'm going to let it breathe. And if I want to watch another one, fine, but I'm not going to just allow these autoplay, uh, not autoplay, but I'm not going to allow my little thumb to keep swiping uh, or finger, whatever you're doing to keep swiping and watching these things um, until I get so overloaded that I have to, I'm forced to step back. You know, that's one of the things that you can start to do. I'm not asking you to start meditating off the rip. I understand this is baby steps and this is where we are. And we have to just be, you know, we have to admit it. But now that you know better, you do better. All right, let's move on to the third one. And the third one is some practical steps that are going to help you. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to practice expanding your attention 
by first, when you're interacting with things that you normally are drawn to and to consume, I want you to pause. I want you to give yourself 30 seconds, 60 seconds. You know, it doesn't have to be long. I want you to pause. And I want you to kind of like, if you can, pull yourself out of yourself and look at yourself. Why am I doing this? Was I even aware that I'm doing this or watching this or, or feeling this? What is it about this in this moment that's satiating me or keeping me engaged? By pulling yourself out of yourself, what you're going to do is you're going to, again, cause yourself to take a breath. And you're going to now start thinking about how you think so that you can become more aware and start to pull back your ability to expand your attention. You know, one of the funniest things about attention, it's, it's very malleable and it doesn't require as much habit forming as you would think. In an instant, you can become aware and change by a simple decision of, no, I'm not gonna watch any more of that. I'm gonna do something else. And then the next thing, now this one is gonna make a lot of people like, oh, I want you <laughs> to look and see. Now, first of all, if you're not a person who reads articles or blogs or what, or or pieces of information, you know, that come to you, news, whatever, I want you to start. And one of the funny things that you're going to start to see is because, like I said, everybody knows about attention more than you do. You'll notice that a lot of articles, whether they be news articles, blogs, or thought pieces, one of the things they're going to put on there, if it's not already uh, given, like if it's not a, a short form content, uh, like Twitter, where you know it's only going to take me two minutes to read this, they're starting to put how many minutes it should take you to read this, okay? Now, if you're like me, I have gotten to the point where I'm looking for the 10 plus minute reads because that's where my attention is needing to increase. But if you can only start with a three minute read, a four minute read, do that, but don't get stuck in that. Don't shy away from the articles and the content that says a 16 or 20 minute read. Don't do that because what you wanna do is you want to become, and you want to get back into control of how the dopamine hits are coming at you. Yes, there are going to be some external, but you get back into control where you say, you know what? I'm not going to just read stuff that takes me 60 seconds or less. I'm going to read other stuff and I'm going to mix it up. I can read a three minute, but then I can read a 16 minute or an hour or whatever. And that will help you to start increasing your attention. Okay. The next and last thing, last point that I want to make about you being practical with your attention pay attention to your physical. If you are feeling like you're, you're, you're doing, you're reading something, you're interacting with something and it's hard, like you're fidgeting or you want to stop and look at something else or you want to get up or, and this is the biggest one, you get sleepy. This is an indicator that the inputs are hitting you to where you're receiving too many and you could possibly be getting into sympathetic shock where you got too many inputs, racing brain. You know, we, we do have at this particular time, we have a finite amount or we understand that we have a finite amount of things that can come at us at a given day. And a lot of us are using them up at the beginning of the day and then just being zombies the rest of the day where we have outsourced our brain and just like zombies, we're walking around with outside um, entities making us feel alive. So if you are experiencing where you're antsy, where you want to turn away and do something else, or you or get or you get sleepy, that is a good indicator that you've you've hit too many out uh, too many inputs coming in. And the best way to do that is breathe through it and do an internal check-in. Now I've talked about this like when I was um, talking about uh, my, losing my mental mojo and what I did to br help bring myself back. Doing a check-in in my body, stopping, taking a breath. How do I feel? Do I really need to go to the bathroom? Do I really need to go and look and see what's in the refrigerator? Because the it's probably going to be the same stuff that was in it the last time I went and looked. Um, do I really need to go and check the weather right now? I'm not outside. I don't need to go check the weather. You know, taking a beat so that you can what? Get outside of yourself and look at how you think and what how you process your world. Just by taking a, a beat, breathing in and doing the cycle of breathing in for five beats, breathing out for five beats, doing that six times, that's a minute. That's going to give you a reset and it's going to release some of the built up outputs or inputs that you are dealing with so that you can continue and go back to it. Because when you are expanding your um, attention, another thing that starts to happen, the quality and sometimes the complexity of the content that you're interacting with grows. And as it grows, you get overwhelmed faster. And so overwhelm does not mean that you give up. Overwhelm means that it is just a, a little 
tip from, from, from the universe to let you know, hey, this is new for you, or you have to build up to this. It's kind of like when you play, when you are game, a, a, a gamer and you have to grind, excuse me, to get to the next level. You get to the point where you're like, okay, I don't have enough experience points or whatever it is to handle this. So let me grind so I can. Same concept. You're going to get to where you are going to be able to handle more and more. And I'm going to tell you, it does not take long. This month, you could have the attention span of a gnat. And next month, you could have the attention span of an elephant. I don't know. No, that's memory. But you could have the attention span of a scholar. Let's, let's do that one. And be able to have focused attention at will by your direction for things that you would have never considered. So this is what I want you to do now. I want you to make sure that you watch. Go watch this next video here because it is something that you're going to need to continue to build your brilliant quest. Know that it is in your power to create and build the mind that you always desired and that you always wanted. And you can do it at will. Don't count yourself out. Don't become where you let external things dog walk you and know that yes, you can have focus. Oh yes, you can. It starts attention span, growing it. All right. So guess what? Yeah. This has been Miss Chanel, your big sis with Brilliant Quest. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment, and I'm going to see you sooner than later. Bye.